What is Paul saying over here? Paul is saying in 15th verse that Yeshua on the cross, he defeated Satan. He defeated Satan, his ministers, the kingdom of Satan, he defeated on the cross. Satan wanted Yeshua to die, but not on the cross and not on the exact time. On Pesach, Yeshua fulfilled the Passover for us. So what the verse is saying is having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them, triumphing over Satan and his kingdom by the cross. Amen. So now, now let's go to Colossians 2.16, the verse we read in the beginning when we began this session. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink with or with regard to a religious festival or Rosh Chodesh celebration or a Shabbat day. These are shadows of things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Now, the verse 17 is not rendered perfectly in the NIV. It's not rendered perfectly. So, we are going to read uh, the other versions. Let's see what the, what the ESV says. Verse 17, uh, these are a shadow of things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. ASV says, which are a shadow of the things to come, but the body is of Christ. And KJV also, over here, I've kept it for you. If, what is happening over here is Paul in verse 8 is talking about human tradition, the Pharisaical uh, uh, teachings, the wrong teachings of the Pharisees. And then in verse 13, he's speaking of circumcision. And here, he's continuing that same thought. The Pharisees used to uh, were, were teaching the oral Torah, the Mishnah, which was not God given, but like the Torah, like the Tanakh, and and then he's talking about the Mosaic law uh, because uh, circumcision, although started with Abraham, it was incorporated. It was then part of the Mosaic law, Leviticus 12, chapter 12. So he's talking about in the 13th verse he says regarding uh, circumcision, but here he's continuing that same thought. He's talking here about the Mosaic law. It is being our choice and no one can judge us. That's what he's saying. Let's see what the, what the ESV says. Verse 17. These are a shadow of things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. ESV says, which are a shadow of the things to come, but the body is of Christ. And KJV also, over here, I've kept it for you. Now, what happens is, this is a very simple verse. This is, this is a very simple verse. Those who understand that Yeshua uh, fulfilled the law, and those who understand that Yeshua started a new uh, system, a new age, completely understand this. There are some people, I have my Gentile brothers, who sometimes uh, ask me or question me, why do you celebrate Shabbat? They, don't, they, they, they feel that Shabbat has been done away with, or, or Rosh Chodesh, uh, the feasts have been done away with. Now, in the, in, the, in the law of liberty, the law of liberty, the law of Christ, the law of the spirit that gives life, we have freedom. I have freedom to celebrate Shabbat and, and, and the Moedim. No one can judge me for that, but if nobody is celebrating, I cannot judge them either. So it's a very simple thing over here, those who understand the liberty that we have in Christ. But what some people say, what some of the false teachers, they say is that here Paul is telling the Colossians to... To not let the Gentile unbelievers, the pagans, the heathens, to judge them for celebrating Shabbat and, and the Moedim. But that's not the case because Paul would not uh, tell the, the Gentile believing brothers to care about what the pagans would think. If that were the case, Paul would have also written that don't let anyone judge you for not committing idolatry. Don't let anyone judge you for not indulging in their... Uh, uh, sexual immoral immoral acts Paul would have said that Paul is not saying that because you're not uh, 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 bowing to an idol now not uh, worshiping a tree or any other man-made idol Paul is not saying that don't let them judge for not uh, committing idolatry not bowing to an idol if 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 Paul would have uh, been talking about the pagans he would have said these things but he's not saying that what Paul is saying over here is he's saying that there were Jewish legalists among them. There were people who were not able to understand that now salvation was by faith alone and these things were now based on a person's individual choice. He, he knew there were, that's, why, that's the reason why there were people who were talking about circumcision being mandatory. We are going to understand in just a few minutes about what happens in Acts 15. There were, there were Jewish believers, but they were, they were more of legalists. 
who were saying that certain things would have to be observed in order to attain salvation, in order to be reckoned as righteous. And Paul is saying, don't let anyone judge you. If Paul is not talking about what the pagans would think, because if Paul were talking about what the pagans would think, he would have definitely said that uh, don't let them judge you for not committing idolatry, for not uh, indulging in shrine prostitution. And also, also, what does the what does verse 17 say? Paul is saying that these things, these are a shadow of things to come. The eighth we say, which are a shadow of things to come, that is the feasts, the Moedim, uh, 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 the Rosh Chodesh, and Shabbat. Shabbat, Rosh Chodesh and some of the feasts are going to become mandatory when Christ comes back and establishes his kingdom. The messianic age, some of these are going to be mandatory. And that is the reason why Paul is saying, which are a shadow of things to come. Now not being mandatory. But then in the age it will be and praise God. Amen. Paul is telling them that they are not supposed to let anyone judge them and he is talking about the legalists. Who, were, who wanted the brothers to, to observe these things in a mandatory aspect, mandatory in a binding sense. Verse 17 clearly shows, tells us that these things are part of the future. Now, now uh, if a person is not celebrating, we, they, we don't need to judge them. Paul is not focusing on the Gentiles, on the, on the pagans, what the pagans would think. Now we have understood in detail regarding these days and Shabbat. We don't need to focus on Shabbat. But here, I remember uh, quite some time back, I was reading an article on the net which said that the word used in Colossians 2.16, Sabbaton, me, has only been used for, uh, for annual, annual Shabbat. That's not right. That's not exact. That's not right. I'll, tell, I'll show you how. The word used in the NIV, I, I've kept the slides for you. You could see... It's written a new moon celebration or a, sub, or, a, or a Shabbat day. ESV or a, a Shabbat. In the ESV, it says a, a Shabbat day. And in the KJV, it says Shabbat days. The word used uh, for Shabbat in Colossians 2.16 is Sabbaton. And the same word has been referred as weekly Shabbat in the following verses. Now, I'm going to show you a few verses uh, that are going to, that where the same word, the same lexeme, Sabaton, which you saw on the slide, has been used where it has been is it referring to weekly Shabbat. Let's let's check them out. Luke 4:16 has the same word that is in Colossians 2:16. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and on the Shabbat day he went into the synagogue as was his custom. He stood up to read. The word used is exactly what is used in Colossians 2:16. Acts, 7, Acts 13, 14. For from Perga they went to Pisidia and Antioch. On the Shabbat they entered the synagogue and sat down. Here again the same word has been used. Acts 16, 13. On the Shabbat we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. The same word has been used. We need to understand one thing. Even if this hadn't been used, even if this wasn't the case, Based on what we have understood in the previous sessions and, and all those passages and uh, the, the non-mandatory aspect, uh, the Shabbat observance not being mandatory now in this age, even without these things, the passages we have studied in detail that Shabbat is not mandatory. And the Moedim also. And the dietary laws. In detail we saw that. Uh, let me show you the same word has also been used for week. The word, the same word has been used for week. Let's see the verses. Below are given some of the verses where this word, Sabaton, has been rendered as weak. Matthew 28, 1. After the Shabbat, at dawn on the first day of the week, the word weak has the same word. Here, Shabbat has, been, uh, has the word in the Greek, Sabaton, the same word. And even first day of the week, the week has the same word. So, it has been used for weekly Shabbat and also for a week. Uh, Mary Magdalene, Miriam Hamagdala. And the other Mary went uh, to look at the tomb. Mark 16, 2. Very early on the first day of the week. Again, the word is Sabaton. Uh, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And Luke 24, 1. On the first day of the week, the same word is used. Uh, very early in the morning, the women took the, spi took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. Colossians 2, 16 is speaking of 
the days, uh, the dietary laws, the, the, the Moedim, the feasts, the new moon festival and Shabbat. Now, if Shabbat was only annual Shabbat, why would he uh, separately speak of the Moedim? He has written all of them, which, can, which obviously contains the Shabbat in it. He has written separately the Moedim, he has written Rosh Kodesh and then Shabbat. Okay, and, and another thing, I, I think I've said this before, but let me say this once again. Uh, Shabbat is Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. It's not on Sunday. It's not on Sunday. You can worship on Sunday. You can go to church on Sunday, on Wednesday, whichever day. But Sunday is not Shabbat. But because we are not focusing that aspect over here in this series, we, we are focusing on the, the non-applicability of the Torah. We haven't taken this topic. With Lord willing, we could take it someday. People can go to church on Sunday on any day of the week. We saw that in, in, in the study of Romans 14, Hebrews 10, 25. And nowhere does the Bible say that the Shabbat day has been changed. And observing Shabbat, I being a Jew, I, I, I still observe Shabbat. I love Shabbat. Our life now in Christ is in complete rest. We are in rest and peace because of the, uh, the king of peace and righteousness. But if you want to celebrate the, the Shabbat day, weekly Shabbat, we can do it. And, and, and I love it. In fact, I have been celebrating it for so many years. And for the joy aspect, not the legalistic way, for the joy of it. One day separate, I, for the joy of it. And the Lord has made some amazing things happen in, in my life and in the ministry work on these days. He speaks to you through his Moism. So if you celebrate them, it's, it's amazing. But if you don't, uh, we are not supposed to judge our brothers who don't celebrate them. And uh, one thing I would like to say over here is, the, the, our Gentile brothers need to, need to provoke uh, the Jews to jealousy. To, they need to provoke them. Two extreme ends. One, who uh, there are people who say that, uh, we need to observe this and then they brag about it and they look down upon those who don't celebrate, which is not the way to do. And then there are our brothers who have no clue of the Moedim. And there's so much of treasure and, and gems in the Moedim. One of the best things to do is, is search Yeshua in the Old Testament, in, in the Torah, in the Nevim. And the different types, do you see the types, typological study. It's amazing. But the danger is what sometimes people do is they put themselves back under the law. And that is not what we are supposed to do. If, if our Gentile brothers would have known, uh, many do, some of them do, they have knowledge of the Moedim, which is beautiful. But most of those who have knowledge of the Moedim, they put themselves there back under the law, which is not the right thing to do. But just imagine if, if the brothers, uh, most of the brothers completely understood the freedom here and yet would have celebrated some of the feasts. Uh, just imagine if you are in a plane. Uh, you are a, a Gentile believer and you have another Jewish unbeliever next to you and, and he tell you, you just start talking to that person and you just talk to him that oh I'm not going to have pizzas and burgers I'm not going to have them right now because uh, I'm celebrating a Kag HaMatzot uh, the Jewish brother would be shocked he would be shocked and that way you could, uh, you could present his own Messiah to him so, so the feast could be used for ev evangelizing that's what Paul did Paul would go uh, on, 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 uh, to the synagogues uh, on, on Shabbat and the, the Moedim and, and of course it was part of his culture and he was brought up in that way. He was obviously going to celebrate. But he also wanted to that way evangelize and spread the good news among his own brothers. Let's move on. Before we go to Acts, we'll just uh, check out a couple of verses from Colossians chapter 1. Verses 21 to 23. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you uh, by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith established and firm and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you have heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Is he talking anything about the law over here? He's not talking about the law. He's talking about faith. He's saying that we have now reconciliation with Abba through Christ's body, through Christ's death. 
and now we stand blameless and holy uh, before Abba because of Christ. Let's see what he says in, in verse 19 and 20. For God was pleased to have all the fullness dwell in him. Let's just pause over here. Let's just, this is again, again similar to what he says in Colossians 2.9. For in Christ dwelleth the, uh, dwells the fullness of the deity in bodily form. What a word. This is again same, similar to what he says in Colossians 2.9. For God was pleased to have all the fullness dwell in him. Reminds me of, of what happened in, in John, uh, you know, uh, Philip. Philip asks Yeshua that just Lord, if you could just show us the Father. And Lord asks him, how could you say this, Philip? I have been with you for so long. How could you ask me to see the Father? He that has seen me, Yeshua says, he that has seen Yeshua has seen Abba. So if you want to see Abba, you see the Messiah of Israel. Anyone who wants to go to, to, to Hashem is through the Messiah. And you want to see Hashem, you see the Mashiach. That's what he's saying. In, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Christ. Dwell in the Messiah. Wow. So verse 20. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood. By making peace. How? Through his blood shed on the cross. No mention of the law. No mention whatsoever. Now what we're going to do is now, uh, we will go to Acts. And uh, if we are studying the non-applicability of the Torah now, after Yeshua, uh, we cannot miss Acts 15 and 21. The pivotal point, the crucial point, the turning point. And there they decide what is it that is required from of our Gentile brothers. And not just Gentiles, there they are going to discuss regarding the Gentiles, uh, Gentile believers. But even if there's a there's a Jew right a Jew, uh, Yehudi, who who doesn't observe some of these things, you know, it's absolutely fine. It's 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 our choice now is the point. So this is the crucial turning point, and uh, let's just we we'll, what we'll do is we'll read the first 21 verses, 21 verses, and as we read, we'll 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 uh, understand them as well. So there we go, Acts chapter 15, uh, verse 1. Certain people came down from Yehuda to Antioch and were teaching the believers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom taught by Moshe, you cannot be saved. Now let's just stop and try to understand what's happening over here. Your, your verse 1 is saying that Brit Milla, uh, circumcision is, is being spoken of. But as we, as we read further, we'll understand that not just circumcision, but the entire law is being spoken of. The entire law. But the verse 1 is saying that these people said that uh, unless you're circumcised, uh, you cannot be saved. So let's see what Paul says. This brought Paul and Barnaba into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and, and Barnaba uh, were appointed along with some other believers to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and the elders about this question. The church sent them on their way and as they traveled through Phoenicia and, and Samaria, they told how the Gentiles had been converted. This news made all the believers very glad. When they came to Yerushalayim, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and elders to whom they reported everything God had done through them. Then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, the Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep the law of Moshe. You see that? This is, is uh, being spoken of. Not just circumcision, but the entire law is being spoken of. The system of the law. They are saying that it needs to be followed. Circumcision and the law of Moshe. The law needs to be observed. That needs to be followed and observed. Just as it was before. That's what they are saying. Uh, the apostles and the elders are meant to consider this question. After much discussion, Kepha got up and, and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. God, who knows the heart, shows that he accepted them by giving the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, to them just as he did to us. He did not discriminate between us and them for he purified their hearts by faith. He purified their hearts by faith. 
Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the Gentiles a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors have been able to bear? No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved just as they are. It's pretty simple. Peter is saying, Peter is talking about what happened in Acts chapter 10 at the house of Cornelius. What happened over there? And the door to the Gentiles was opened. And he's, he's explaining that and he's saying that it is only by faith we are saved. We don't need uh, anything more than faith. He's saying no circumcision. Circumcision doesn't uh, remain mandatory. And, and the observance of uh, the other uh, things, other points of the law, other things of the law are not mandatory now. That's what he's saying. The whole assembly became silent as they listened to Barnabas and Paul telling about the signs and wonders Hashem had done among the Gentiles through them. When they finally finished, Yaakov spoke up. Brothers, he said, listen to me. Uh, Kepha has, Shimon has described to us how God first intervened to choose a people for his name from the Goim, from the Gentiles. The words of the prophets are in agreement with this as is written. After this, I will return and rebuild David's fallen tent. Its, re its ruins I will rebuild and I will restore it, that the rest of mankind may seek Adonai, even all the Gentiles who bear my name, says the Lord who does these things, things known from long ago. 